Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade. Less than three months until Christmas. What did I buy in September of 2023? Now it's going to look a lot like last month's August video. First up, more Peco V Union Premium Playmat Collections. I bought a case of six of these. They came out to $18 a box. And the reason I bought them is those five juicy Crown Zenith packs in there. Now, yeah, you know, it's got a bunch of other stuff. The promo card, the big oversized thing, and the play mat, all that junk. But the big thing is the five Crown Zenith packs. And at 18 bucks for the box, it comes out to $3.60 per Crown Zenith pack, which is pretty close to the cheapest I've bought them at. Now, today, these boxes, the best I could find on the big marketplaces was $22. So I bought them about 18% below market price and you know if you want to know what i'm buying this stuff on the day i buy it not at the beginning of the next month join the patreon those guys know exactly when i buy stuff sometimes before i buy it second up this month the hisuian zoroark v-star premium collection now this has a mix of packs from the sword and shield era inside of it especially that little uh, evolving skies pack you see right there you see that see that e yep evolving skies and some others that all have good value. So I bought a six box case of these paying 22 bucks per box. They have $31 worth of sealed booster packs in them. So inverted EV on this box compared to the sealed boosters inside. Today, looking out at the market, the best I could find on the big marketplaces was 29 bucks. So I got about a 25% discount to today's current market price. And third up this month, Eevee Evolutions Premium Collection. I love this. Just how gorgeous this packaging is with all the evolved forms of Eevee in there and a bunch of booster packs. Now, I bought a six-box case of these as well, 30 bucks per box. Today, out in the marketplaces, $54 per box was the best I could find them at. So I got a discount of 45% to today's current market price. Again, if you want those kind of discounts, join the Patreon you can get in on these things as I'm buying them. And last this month, I bought a 10 box case of Shining Fates Elite Trainer boxes. This was just something I had missed back in the last couple of years. I got them for $33 per box. Today, they are $44 per box, best price on the big marketplaces. So I got a 25% discount on these. Now, going forward into October, of course, Bright Lights releases this coming Friday, October 6th. And my Flesh and Blood monthly sales data video is coming probably Wednesday this week. So a week after that, Doctor Who releases on Friday, October 13th. So far, the collector box sales data for that have been pretty weak. I published a video about it yesterday with the first look at release minus two weeks. But the reality is, all of the magic market is weak right now. And so with respects to buying magic product, you notice I... I didn't have any here. It was all Pokemon this month. You'll notice if you go back and you look last month, I'm pretty sure it was all Pokemon last month too. And so I haven't been buying much magic except just to open for singles to sell on TCG Player when there is extreme inverted EV. So if you're buying magic right now, you've got to focus on quality. I would recommend half premium and premium expansions only. No standard expansions right now. And products that are out of print, I continue to think the best, most mispriced products in the magic market right now are things like Time Spiral Remastered Draft Boxes that have fallen all the way down close to $200. Double Feature is still incredibly misunderstood. People still have a horrible attitude about it. Do yourself a favor. Go look at the foil price multiples on that set. Think about how hard it is to get particular foils. And go look at the Booster Pack Engineering Double Feature has the best booster pack engineering of any expansion, at least in the last three years. It has such rich, rich contents in the booster packs, and people simply don't want to take the time to go look at the product and understand long term it's going to do awesome. I also still love Modern Horizons 2 collector boxes. I think those are underpriced. They've fallen from 400s about 6 to 12 months ago down to about 300 today. And lastly, of course, Dominaria Remastered Collector Boxes. You know, there's there's no universe in the future where those don't do great. There's no universe where Force of Will stops being a popular, sought-after, valuable card. And 
those boxes are going to do wonderful. So, you know, if you're like me and you always put back at least a little bit of every product and you would think, hey, I need to buy some of these standard products soon. Well, look, we've got three-year expansion life cycles right now for standard. You can give it time. Wait to buy standard later. Um, I haven't bought Wilds of Eldraine yet, and so I'm just going to wait. It's okay. The market for Magic is weak, and that's fine right now. So, you know, the overall TCG market is weak. If you take one step above that to the macro economy, it is weak and unsure. It's not terrible. It's not apocalyptic. You know, I still read one or two articles out of the financial press every day of writers arguing over whether we're going to stick the soft landing or not. And the great thing is, the longer we argue about it, the more likely that it will be decently soft. It may not be soft. It may be a hair bumpy, but I don't think it's going to be cataclysmic. We've had 15 months of the financial press arguing about whether we're going to hit the, the soft landing or not. And every day, businesses, people, the economy in general are more prepared. But when you take the step further down into the TCG market, the whole thing's kind of been low for a couple of years. It's been gradually going down different parts at different rates, other parts having spikes along the way. Magic's, of course, doing very poorly under Watsi's current stewardship. Fab is down from the April highs, but it's up over the last couple of years. It's certainly up over the last one year and uh, up over the last two years, but down since April. Pokemon's cooled off a little bit, but it's way up over the last two years. And this brings me to a point that I try to impress upon people who maybe have not been investing in the stock market or in investing in general for as long as I have, and that's it. Down markets are easy to invest in. It's bull markets that, hard, that are hard. You know, when you go out and you look at something like, let's just take a, a real estate investment trust, and you say, well, what are all their properties under management? What are their tenancy rates? What are their dividend coverage ratios? What's their cash flow look like? And you look at all that stuff and you say, man, this is a solid business that owns thousands or tens of thousands or 50 or 100,000 pieces of real estate. And you say, People want to sell this to me at a discount that pushes the annual yield up to 5 or 6 or 7%, and they own all these properties, and the tenancy rates look like this, and it doesn't make sense. And it's easy to buy into assets like that at those points in time. You know, When you're looking at something like EV Evolutions Collection, and you can buy it 45% below the market price because certain parts of the market are down, certain retailers are struggling, then you start to think, why would I not buy that? Why would I not pick up a whole case of these beautiful boxes at those cheap prices? And so it's really easy to invest during a down market. You know, I look out at something like, again, Dominaria Remastered Collector Boxes. You look at all the tutors, you look at uh, Force of Will and Sylvan Library and all the rest of the great reprints that are in those boxes in the wonderful different treatments in foil. And you think, you know, these are not low because these are bad cards. These boxes are not cheap because of any reason except that the macro economy is down, the TCG market is down, Faith and Magic is at all-time lows, Watsi are a bunch of idiots, and that's dragging down the price of those good assets. But we know in the long term, uh, equity in cards, equity in the secondary TCG market, it rebuilds because force of wills get locked away in people's decks. They get put in binders, they get graded into slabs, and they're no longer on the market, and eventually that starts to rebuild equity in the individual cards. And so to any extent that we might even say Dominaria Remastered collector boxes are low in price today because of overprinting of the corresponding draft boxes from the same expansion, the markets will heal that in time. And so you look out there and, and you see assets like that, and you start to say, you know, it's actually quite easy to buy these kind of things. It's in the bull markets that it's difficult to invest because because you'll go out and you'll look at an asset and you'll say, if I jump into that asset now, you know, I, I think it's overpriced, but um, is the market going to correct it downwards or will performance actually catch up to the price and surpass it and make it a good value in the future? And the calculus of those kind of things is difficult. But when things are cheap, when things are on sale, being an investor, it's easy. You know, I look back at... Uh, last summer, summer of 2022, when I was pounding the table about flesh and blood boxes being underpriced, and I look even after 
flesh and blood boxes have now come off the highs of April of 2023, they're still up 30 to 50% from where I was pounding the table telling people to buy them last summer and where I was increasing my positions. And the same if you go a little longer timeline, Pokemon booster boxes going back to fall of 2021 when the Pokemon company famously dumped six expansions worth of reprints onto the market over a couple of week period, annihilated the sealed market. And I was buying Chilling Rain at $85, $90, buying Battle Styles at $80 to $85, Fusion Strike in the low 90s. You know, those were easy buys to make. And the same thing with a bunch of the sealed kind of collection products, just like these kind of things that I was putting up to my patrons a year ago to go pick up and buy. You know, all of those booster boxes from 21 and the sealed products from 22 and the sealed booster packs within those products, those are all up 50 to over 100% since I bought those things. So, you know, there's parts of the market that are doing okay. They're doing fine. And in the short run right now, we've just hit a bad spot with just about everything. But if you zoom back a little and you look at where is Pokemon today compared to where it was in late 2021, man, it's doing great. Even though in the last four or five months, it's down a bit. Yeah, the new Scarlet and Violet era boxes are down to where you can get them on bonus bucks sales in the 80s. Buy them while you can. It's easy to buy those things when markets are down and you're investing for the long term. So just keep in mind, even if you feel bad that Magic's done badly for the last oof, 18 to 24 months, the most every Magic product is flat to down over that time. Not every one of them, but almost every one of them. Go look at all those flesh and blood boxes that are up 30 to 50% since last summer. All those Pokemon deals that are up 50 to 100% in fewer than two years. So there's still amazing opportunity out there. The future is always bullish. There's always a chance to find a good deal, something that's worth putting back into the closet for the long term. I've talked way too long at this point. You know, if you want to get in on these deals when I'm buying them, sometimes before I buy them, join the Patreon. It's four bucks a month. There's a lot of other things up there. There's some inverted EV analyses that I sometimes do not share over here on YouTube. And at the very least, I wait a while before I bring them over here to YouTube so that my patrons can have them without competition for a while and lots of other things. There's always the ability to mes message me and get an answer long before you'll get one at, on YouTube, if you ever get an answer on YouTube at all. I'm sorry, I just don't have the time for all the YouTube comments to answer them all, but my patrons are always taken care of. Let me know, what did you buy this month? Where do you think the market's going? Where are the other deals out there? What am I missing? Thanks to everyone who makes this content possible, especially my supporters on Patreon. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and join me on Final Trade.